days. So the first thing I should probably do is answer the question, what is the DevNet sandbox? But I'm not going to do that right away. What I'd like to do is circle back on that and, and tell you how that fits into the rest of the DevNet zone. Um, and then hopefully you'll have a little bit more context as to what problems we're trying to solve. So let's talk about what DevNet's all about. We're about providing developers tools and the resources that they need to go do the things that developers do. So I highly encourage you to spend a lot of time here today uh, taking advantage of, of those resources that we're providing. Right here is the, uh, the demo pods. These folks have come from not only all over the US, but all over the world today to have technical discussions with you all. Um, these are technical folks. Some of, the, some of them are the, the, the technology experts in their field. And they're here for you to have those technical discussions with. So please take advantage of those folks. Something else I highly encourage is up in front, we have two large tables of, uh, of learning labs. Those are just going to be quick, directed labs that will take you through some of the processes if you want to learn about uh, a technology or an API. They'll take 10 to 15 minutes to go through, uh, some of them as, as long as an hour. But by the time you get through, you will have learned something usable and meaningful. Also up on the far right hand side over here, you can take advantage of some of the many workshops. It's where you sit around a small table uh, with a facilitator and sort of go through a classroom session, but it's kind of a working session. So there's an awful lot to do here. What I'd like you to think about is after Cisco Live is over and you head home and you're back in your normal routine, all right, you're, you're thinking about your next development project. What sort of environment am I going to use for that project? So when you're, when you're ready to develop in that, uh, your next project, you can go and download a VM and start making API calls and start playing with the technology, seeing if that, that's going to meet your needs. Uh, but what if you, what if you have more more requirements. You actually need to talk to some real devices, some, some routers and some switches. Well, then you've got to procure those things. You've got to get funding. You've got, to, you've got to get those things in. You've got to rack them and stack them and have somebody configure all that, right? Well, that gets a little bit harder. Now, what if you want a really robust environment? What if you want to generate some network traffic or have a whole bunch of simulated endpoints? Well, now that gets really expensive and the pain gets worse. So, I mean, if you, if you just want to add network traffic to your environment, you might have to go uh, buy an ICSI or a Spirant solution. So now you're talking tens or maybe $100,000. But we just want to develop, right? So what we want to do in, within the Cisco sandbox is remove those pain points. We want to provide the developers an environment to get started quickly and to have an environment in which to go, go do a full development if you want to. So now I'll come back to what is the DevNet Sandbox. Um, before I go into the slides and go into the details, I just want to give you a quick picture of what a Sandbox Lab looks like. So give me a second to jump out of this. All right, so this is an example of a lab uh, that we provide in the DevNet Sandbox. It just happens to be an APIC lab. And up over here, we have real routers and switches. These are not emulated. These are real devices, a couple of Linux servers. And then this over here will be a VM, uh, an APIC server, an APIC controller that will spin up for you within the lab. Within each lab, there's a lot of information. There's instructions about what's in the lab, how you access everything. And down at the bottom of each lab, we're always going to provide links to more information on the technology, where you can go get help, where you can go ask questions. So this is just, a, I wanted to give you a quick visual of what uh, a DevNet Sandbox Lab looks like. So now let me jump back into the slide deck and we'll talk a little bit more about specifics.
All right, so what we're going to cover is what is Sandbox, the specifics of what it is. There's a couple of lab models we need to discuss because um, a couple of our labs are a little bit different. Then we're going to talk about the self-driven IVT. It's a way to go get your Cisco compatibility logo. And then I want to make sure everybody is very clear on exactly how you need or what you need to do to go take advantage of Sandbox. All right, the goal of Sandbox is to enable developers to do the things that developers do. And we're going to do that by providing robust, ready environments in which to do that. So we have designed the Sandbox specifically to address those pain points that I mentioned before the hard things to get started in your development process. But some, some developers actually don't want to do development. Some developers just want to come in and they just want to make some API calls. They just want to see if a technology is going to solve their needs. They don't want to download a VM and do all sorts of hard work. They just want to go play and, and see if something's going to work. The sandbox is a perfect place to just experiment. But you can do a full development and a full testing process in a lab as well. So here's uh, an example of some of the things you can do within the sandbox. Just kick the tires. Try out a technology, make those API calls. You can do integration, you can do testing. Early access, this is an important point. We will always deploy the latest available software within sandbox. So sometimes we can have a lab deployed within sandbox before it is readily available through other sources. So we will always have the latest and greatest Cisco technology in which you can go take advantage of. Collaboration. What that means is that you can have different users, regardless of, of geography, in the same lab at the same time. So if you are here and you've got a colleague down the hall that wants to take a look at something, or you've got a colleague over in Europe that you're like, hey, Joe, I want you to come take a look at an error I'm seeing in the lab you can invite another user into the lab, be working in the exact same physical environment, regardless of the geographies of your team. And another thing that we have just started offering is the IVT process, which I'll, I'll talk about more in depth in just a minute. So the sandbox is always on, and it's self-service. You don't need to work with any Cisco employees or jump through any big hoops to do it. It's, it's always on and it's always ready. Right now we have 34 publicly available labs. This time last year at Cisco Live, we had four. We're turning up these labs at a furious pace because the developers are requesting, hey, I really want to, I really want to play with this technology or I really want to take a look at this. So we're listening to what you're requesting and we're turning these up as fast as we possibly can. But we have 34 labs available today. And we're trying to hit all of the Cisco technologies listed up here. Okay, I already talked about the session sharing. So that's where you can invite other users into the lab. Many of our labs have a fairly robust tool set. Like I said, we have network traffic generation. Um, you can do uh, simulated uh, endpoints. One of the things that we have in our lab is text updates. Some of the provisioning takes a little while. Some of the commands, especially in the IVT labs, can take an hour or two to run. So we'll always send you an email when events occur that you need to be aware of. But if you need to head off to a meeting or you head off to lunch, you can sign up for a text update and say, hey, tell me when that thing is done. Send me a text and let me know when the lab is ready for me to, to jump back on again. There's virtual machines in a lot of the labs. And as I showed before, there's a lot of in-lab guidance where you can just click and go get more information about the technology of the lab that you're in. All right, we have two different lab models and it, it's important uh, for everyone to understand the distinction between the two. The first is what we call an always on lab. And it is always on. What that means is, is uh, there's no need to reserve it. There's nothing to provision. What we're gonna do is in the lab, we will just provide instructions on how you access the lab. But it's a shared environment. So you can be in there with uh, other users from different companies, and there's no administrative access to anybody. It's typically used for just making, uh, making rest calls uh, and just doing basic experimentation. 
but you're, you're typically not going to know that other people might be using the same machine at the same time. Now that contrasted with a reservation-based lab. This is what most people tend to use when they think of, I have to do my own development, and this is going to be a private environment that only you have access to or anybody that you actually invite. You are going to have exclusive access to this lab and you're going to have administrative control over all or most of the devices in that lab. So this is the, the, the type of model that most people use for real development, uh, for integration and for testing. So we have the always on, which is a shared, no administrative control, reservation based model where you are in a private environment um, and you have administrative control over all the devices in the lab. So here's just a pictorial example of the different lab models. So the always on lab, again, multiple users from different companies can be in. The, the, the model in the middle is, is the typical use case. One user gets in, reserves a lab, does what he needs to in there uh, by himself. And the, the other model is, is that that user chooses to invite other uh, colleagues from the same company into the lab to do sort of a collaborative uh, effort in the lab. So the reservation-based access flow, what will happen is you will go into our dashboard and you'll, make a, you'll choose a lab and make a reservation. If the lab is available right away, you can have the reservation start right then. Uh, you may choose to, to make a reservation out in the future when you have more dedicated time. So that's what the clock indicates. You choose when the reservation starts and how long the reservation will be for. Your reservation begins and then we will provision the lab. Typically we have to spin up some VMs, do some testing to make sure that the lab is fully provisioned correctly. As soon as it's fully provisioned, we'll send you an email with VPN credentials. You'll VPN into the lab you have full access to the lab. All right, so now I want to jump to uh, the offering we have around IVT testing. So IVT is the process and the testing required to obtain a Cisco compatibility certification. So this is the sort of the, uh, the standard flow that we've had to get the IVT process up till now is on your partner dashboard, you go and request a third party uh, IVT certification, you pay that third party money, they will schedule the time to do the certification of your product and they will execute the test for you and tell you the results of the certification, whether you passed or not. So this is sort of the, the, the typical model. Within Sandbox, we're going to offer an alternative, or we are offering an alternative to this particular flow. And this is what it looks like. From the partner dashboard, you can submit for a Sandbox IVT certification. You pay Sandbox for the time it will require to do that certification. You schedule the time, and you actually run through the test plan. We have built the automation within Sandbox to go and do the testing and to make sure that, uh, that all of the requirements are met for the IVT certification. So you start in the same place in your partner dashboard. You can take either path depending on what you want and you will end up with a Cisco compatible certification. A couple of things I want to, to point out, the differences, one is the cost. We are offering the, uh, the Sandbox certification for roughly half the price. A, a real pain point of this path over here is you are at, uh, at the mercy of when that third party lab can schedule your testing. And right now that range is anywhere from six weeks to six months. That may be painful. If you want a certification, you have to wait six months and they say, that, sorry, that's the best we can do. What we offer is you can make a lab at your convenience, your engineering resources to go through the test plan and we will get you that certification, almost all cases, faster than the other model. Um, if anybody has any questions specifically about IVT, Stella Hanna, who's here in the, the middle of the auditorium, she is our IVT expert. Uh, you can find her either after this session or over at the Sandbox uh, pod over here, but she can answer all questions IVT. 
So again, some of our partners are very price sensitive, so this is a very good model for them. We do a lot of the testing through the automation within the sandbox. We can certainly do a faster time to market if, you're, if, if getting to market and getting that certification uh, is important to you. And again, it's provided as a choice. Both are still available. You can choose what works best for you. These are the technologies that we currently have available. They're all uh, within collaborations. We have call accounting and billing, voice recording, the endpoints, and the operator attended consoles. We will be adding more, but this is what we have currently available today. This is just an example of uh, what one of our IBT labs looks like. Again, the left-hand pane, there's going to be lots and lots of information about how you drive the IBT. Um, uh, uh, the, the actual test plan of this lab will be provided a very detailed set of instructions of exactly what you need to go do. And on the right-hand side are the commands that you need to run. So you'll go conf configure something, run a command. You might need to do something else, a manual step and run another command, and that's just the way you plow through the process. We will collect the information through the, through the automation. When you're done with the process, uh, that information will be submitted, and we will go and determine uh, if you have met the criteria for the IVT certification. So we have had a number of partners come through and use this. I'm just gonna flash up a couple of testimonials up here. I'm not gonna read these to you. So you can see we've had a number of big name companies come and take advantage of uh, the IVT Sandbox program. And we have had overwhelmingly positive response uh, to this particular product. All right, so I wanna make sure that everybody is very clear on how you all can go and take advantage of just the Sandbox for your development needs or the IVT. The first requirement is, is that you must be uh, registered with DevNet. That's very, very easy, developer.cisco.com. There's a big button up on the top there that says register. We'll ask you some questions. You're registered with DevNet. That's the only requirement to get to the sandbox. On the front page, there's at least two places. There's actually more, but there's two very easy places. You go hit sandbox on either one of those. You'll end up on this blue screen here. That's the sandbox uh, front door. There's some good information there. If you want to go look at all the labs in our catalog, hit the go to labs button and it will take you to our lab catalog. So each of those tiles represents an available lab. So what's required to get into a DevNet sandbox? All you need is a connected web enabled device. That's it. So again, I want to come back to the sandbox goal. We have built these labs specifically for developers to do the things that you all do to provide the, these environments to remove all those pain points I talked about earlier. You don't have to go build your own environment. You don't have to order equipment. You don't have to maintain that environment. Just come and reserve one of our labs, do your development there, and, uh, and I think you'll find it a very positive experience. Two things I want to leave you with. We will always be announcing new capabilities and new labs first on our Twitter account. So if you want to follow us, you can follow us at, at, at DevNet under Sandbox. And again, when we turn up new labs and new technologies, uh, this will be the place where they will be announced first. The last thing I want to leave you with is where you go get more information. I'm going to give you four places to go get more information. developer.cisco.com slash sandbox. That's our front door. There's a learning lab up front where you can go in and just test drive the sandbox. It's going to guide you through and show you some of the features. Uh, the third thing is, is I will be giving a one hour class tomorrow at one in classroom number two, which is back in the back corner. And I won't be going over a bunch of slides. I will actually be going into the sandbox and we will go through and hit buttons and show you how the whole process works and how you navigate. So it's gonna be sort of a working session. So again, that's tomorrow at one. And 
The sandbox booth is right in front of classroom two. I got that backwards, right in front of classroom one. Um, we are gonna be here for the duration of the show. So please come and engage with us. We'd love to have uh, technical and sandbox related discussions with you all. I hope you found it helpful. And uh, again, please come play with us in the sandbox. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, do we have any questions for Daniel? We still have a couple of minutes left if uh, we do have any questions. All right, Daniel, I have a question for you real yes. quick. What happens if you've gone to the sandbox and, uh, and you run into some issues? Are there some, some support people or is there a help environment that people can go to? There absolutely is. So when I showed you a picture of the lab on the instructions pane at the bottom, there are always going to be links to support forums where you can go ask questions about the particular technology or there's a, always a link there for the sandbox forums uh, and you can ask questions or raise issues in those sandbox forums. So those are monitored uh, and so you will get a, a quick response if you go to those forums and request more information or request help. Now if I'm a partner and, um, and I've got some technology and I want to work with Cisco, what is the process? Um, do, I, do I need to go through this IVT stuff that you talked about? The, so the, the Cisco certification, the, the IVT process is optional. What that does is that gets you that, that badge that says your product is, uh, is uh, IBM, uh, sorry, uh, Cisco compatible. So it's going to give you that logo. Um, you do not have to do that logo. Um, so that's optional. Some partners choose to do that and, and, and some do not. Okay, excellent. Do we have any other questions from the audience before we, uh, before we end up for the day?